This is a straightforward 8-bar piano loop. I've written it out for the benefit of people who can read music and if you look at the um, original blog post that this video is being embedded in, I'll give you the address at the end, um, the, uh, the score is going to be reproduced there. Let's just have a quick listen to it. This is how it sounds. Okay, a few little things to bear in mind there. I've written this loop quite quickly. Um, you'll see it's got a fair bit of open space in it. There are quite a few quite long notes. If you can read music, you can see there we've got six beats on that single chord and uh, six beats on that chord again there. Um, leaving a lot of space. I always think that if you're using piano loops or any sort of instrumental loops, leaving space in them is a good thing. If they're too busy, then um, it can get difficult to add effects like you know drum loops, um, synths underneath. Um, you know you need to give the rest of the um, the rest of the piece of music that will eventually develop from this loop room to um, you know room to develop and grow. Okay, so we've got a basic loop. What can we do with something like that? How can we use it to sketch out a song? Well, if we open up GarageBand what you can see here is um, a simple garage band arrangement garage band i should say if you're american anyway a simple garage band arrangement featuring exactly that loop um, you can see the piano track over the top here um, i haven't actually dropped the loop in I, i've kind of improvised on it a little bit and changed it around um, so it won't be the precise loop but it, it is close to it's the same chord sequence um, chord sequences in the original post I should say as well um, and I've added various bits and pieces of other tracks so we've got um, uh, a drum loop in there I'll just play the drum loop Do -ba -do, silence all those be quite, a, quite a sort of um, macho suddy loop there nice kind of contrast with the uh, sweetness of the piano loop Okay, back to the start. I've also added in some strings which kind of um, give it an almost kind of ethereal sound. Hold on, I'm locking off the wrong ones there. We want to listen to strings. Uh, here we go. Garage Band doesn't have a really great string sound, but not bad. And again, if you're just sketching stuff out, it's good enough. If you're actually going to produce a song based on these loops, you'll probably go into Logic or um, you know Pro Tools, grab some really high quality software instruments. But for the purposes of sketching, this is a really good sound. I, I mean, you know, it's not bad. A lot of people won't hear the difference anyway. Um, if you look, uh, no, you can't really see it from here, but um, I've actually put a fair bit of reverb on those strings just to give them a bit of extra depth. And apart from the strings, you'll see we've got um, a synth bass down there. That's not particularly interesting. It's just quite a tight, tight sort of synth bass. Um, let's see how it sounds. Yeah, really sort of um, a real sub bass sound. When the whole track is playing, you kind of wouldn't notice it's there, but you'd notice it if it were taken out. It's just a bit of a very subtle thickening up. Um, I've not got it like the drums actually I've not got it super super loud okay let's go back to the start the other thing I have done and I should say you know I've put this all together really quickly um, put these solo star synths in just for um, just for sort of little bingly bongly pingy sounds um, what you'll see I've done let's bring the playhead back to the start there we go um, we've got this one which is playing um, the A an octave above middle C and this one which is playing the A an octave above that and that's all they're doing j j just the one note the A's just stabbing on them and I've got this one panned all the way to the left and I've got this one panned all the way to the right there's a this one's a little bit quieter and it's got a little bit more reverb on it so it's got an echo sort of effect 
Um, let's just play that to give you a sense of how that sounds. Really subtle. And they're coming in pairs in a sec. That's for top A. Going down to the G and upper G. Okay, well, we'll see how those sound when we come to play the final track. So let's take everything off and listen to the piano loop. In fact, let's just listen to the piano loop by itself. Um, just once through so we can hear what I've done. You, you, as, as I say, you'll hear that I'm not playing the loop exactly as it was originally written like that. I've improvised on it a little bit. Um, but um, it, it, it's basically just that you could use the loop. Pans just fractionally to the left. Tiny bit more reverb than Garage Band puts on it naturally as a preset. I did actually record this with a click track before I put the drums on. So it sounds really loose and free, but it is tied to the beat. Okay, so there we are, there's our loop. And let's go back to the start and take all of our tracks off mute and listen to the whole thing. Hopefully, it should sound pretty cool. Okay, so all that is really is a sketch for what would be a full song. Um, the point I'm trying to make here is that you can achieve an awful lot just by putting together a few quick loops and slapping them together in GarageBand. If you have an idea for a song, you can put it together, put it in GarageBand as a draft, and, and it's there. You can come back to it in two or three weeks' time, which is actually often a pretty good tactic because um, you know often if you put something together like that you fall in love with it straight away and you come back to it two or three weeks later and you know you can look at it a bit more objectively um so dead simple if you can put together your own piano loops or grab some acapellas or grab some you know instrumental loops from elsewhere um but you have there the basis for a whole song um as i wrote in let's find uh, i don't have the, the post in front of me i wrote in uh, a Jamcast post a little while ago about how you can create whole songs just from very simple chord loops. Uh, the two examples I gave were Coldplay's Viva La Vida and um, Such Great Heights by the Postal Service. Really lovely songs built on just loops of four chords and you can do exactly the same. That's all that is. In fact, there's more than four chords. Um, you know, um, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, but you, you could use that as the basis of a whole song. It doesn't need to be a lot more complicated than that. Okay, if you've got any questions, bung them in the comments thread on the original Jamcast post, which I will stick at the end of this screencast. So you can, if you're watching this on, um, you know, on a site other than jamcast.co.uk, you can head over there, ask a, ask a question, make a comment, um, say whatever you like. Okay, there we go. Like I said, you can see the original post that this um, screencast is designed for at this URL, jamcast.co.uk slash create song sketch loops garage band. Okay, so um, if you're seeing this video outside of the context of Jamcast, head over to the blog, have a look because I've included the notation for the piano loop and the chord sequence. Um, and various other bits and pieces there that will be kind of useful to you if you are looking um, at this screencast right now. 